Mark Faber, Managing Director of Mark Faber Limited and the publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report. And he, of course, is the Managing Director of uh, his own investment firm. Mark, to have you on the program. Uh, so no sigh of relief from you, considering we have new leadership in Europe. Well, I, I think uh, the market was oversold and uh, we are rallying now. But basically, there's not much change. But I'd like to say this. I think sooner or later the Europeans, uh, specifically the ECB, will also have to monetize, and therefore the problems can be postponed for a while. Okay, problems are postponed for a while. What does that mean for equity markets? Because we are seeing a rally today, but you don't think we'll make new highs in the next 6 to 12 months? Well, I think it's going to be very difficult for markets to make a new high above. In the case of the S&P, May 2, uh, the S&P at 1370, I think there's a lot of supply between this level here, 1260, to around 1350. So I doubt we'll see new highs. But it doesn't mean that the market cannot rally another 5% or so. Okay, well, taking a look at your asset allocation, Mark, 25% in equities, 25% in cash, 25% in real estate, 25% in precious metals. To me, it sounds like uh, you don't really have a view right now on the markets. Are you a bit confused? <laughs> no, I have a view. My view is that nobody knows because markets <laughs> now are very volatile, partly because interest rates are at 0%. And in real terms, negative, which essentially stimulates speculation. And in addition, we have high frequency trading that leads to very wide swings in markets because the high frequency traders are basically based on models that are momentum like models. In other words, the market moves up, everybody goes long, the market moves down, everybody goes uh, short. And what we had is a peak. As I mentioned, on May 2nd, 1370 on the S&P, and then we went down sharply in late yeah. July, August, and bottomed out on October 4th at 1,074 on the S&P when everybody turned negative, and after we had again this very sharp rally of almost 20%, and I think right. this rally may carry on somewhat, uh, and that the super bears that think the S&P drops to 400, for the time being, they will have to go into hibernation. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, they have to feast before they do that. Uh, Mark, okay, so if, if you think that we're going to see maybe a, a bit of a rally here, how long do you think this rally might last on the markets? Well, I think that uh, usually the second half of the year and the first few months of the new year are periods of seasonal strength. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the market rallying until February to April and then starting to sell off again in 2012. Oh, wow. Okay, so falling off in 2012. All right, so let me just ask you one more question, Mark. Uh, okay, so we have 25% in a lot of uh, diversified assets. Do you think we, might could, we could see that lows retested again before uh, we get into, the, uh, I guess, the year's end? That I doubt. I think okay. maybe we dropped to around 1,200, but I think there is now quite a lot of support on the S&P around 1,230, 1,240, and uh, that's new lows below 1,074, which were reached on October 4th, is most unlikely. I also happen to think that the Asian markets have bottomed out for the time being, that they'll rally. But uh, no new highs. Okay. Well, Mark, before I let you go, talk to me about allocation. Uh, would you say you're more bullish on Asia than you are in the rest of the world, or do you like the U.S. better, or maybe you're brave enough to, you know, go into Europe as well? Well, it's funny that you're asking this, because if I look at the volatility we had in markets, and the result is actually that the S&P and the Nasdaq are flat for the year whereas the European and Asian markets are down between 10 and 20 percent. So this year, the U.S. market has actually outperformed many other markets, and I think this outperformance may continue for a while because mm. in the U.S. you have guaranteed 
extremely expansionary monetary policies with zero interest rates staying there essentially forever because the <laughs> new thinking at the Fed is that they will keep interest rates at zero until the unemployment rate drops below 7.5%. Now, this may never happen because as in the Middle Age, when we had village idiots, we have today a lot of unemployable people. So the natural unemployment rate may be, in modern society, around 10%. Okay, Mark. Well, thank you so much for your uh, honest well, and frank pleasure. insights there. <laughs> it's my Good pleasure. to see you, Mark.